first of all, in a nutshell, what is a circular economy and how can it help us tackle climate change? The best way to describe a circular economy is to look at today's economy, which is linear. So we take a material out of the ground, make something out of it, and then the products get thrown away. Within a circular economy, you take a material out of the ground, you make sure that product stays within the economy for as long as possible. So it's all about eliminating waste and pollution to keep that value in the system, circulating the materials that sit within the products that sit within the system, and most importantly, regenerating natural capital. So actually making sure the biological materials have the ability to regenerate land. And that sounds like a pretty fundamental change to how we're doing th things now. Are you talking about a whole wholesale systemic change to our economy? And if so, that's a very big ask, isn't it? It's a big ask, but it's a massive opportunity. And if we look at today's economy, we take a material, we use it and then we throw it away. In the long term, that, that simply can't run. We have finite resources available to us and also we're releasing many greenhouse gas emissions. Within a circular economy, you have a massive opportunity to reduce emissions by keeping those products and materials in use. In fact, 55% of carbon emissions can be cut through switching to renewable energy, which is very understood, but a circular economy can help to tackle the remaining 45%. So we're just a few weeks away now from the COP26 UN summit. All the talk around that is about reducing our use of coal, about financing developing countries and also about improving global emissions targets. So how does your circular economy fit into that wider picture? Well, circular economy can help to tackle the 45% of carbon emissions that switching to renewable energy can't touch. That's how we make things, how we produce things, including food. If we switch to regenerative practices within those sectors, we can massively cut global emissions. And this is about incentivising the right business model shift. It's about incentivising farming to be circular and regenerative. So it's not just a conversation about switching from fossil fuels to renewable energy, which is obviously absolutely vital, but it's also the conversation around how we decouple economic growth from resource constraints. And, and what are the priorities in those other industries outside of energy then? It's about eliminating waste and pollution when we design products. So designing things so there's no waste and there's no pollution. It's about making products sit within a system for as long as possible. And that could be anything from apparel to vehicles, making sure they're remanufacturable. And then once they come to the end of their design life, they can be the materials can be recovered and put back into the system. And most importantly, it's about biological materials allowing them to regenerate, allowing them to go back to the land and helping biodiversity to thrive, which is currently a massive challenge globally. So bringing this back to the COP talks, what does success at that meeting look like to you? I think an agreement around what needs to be financed is crucial. Obviously, finance is a huge part of switching from a carbon heavy, intensive economy to one which uses far less carbon. A lot of the renewables incentives have been brought into place in the developed world. But what about other incentives? How about incentives to how we make products and use products? How about incentives to help farmers farm in a different way and businesses to run in a different way? That's where the conversation needs to go as well. And you've just been appointed an environmental advisor to the Scottish Government. So what's your view on what their priorities should be? From the circular economy perspective, obviously, this is where my, my, my interest and my, my, my hope lies. There's obviously a very clear switch to renewable energy, but within circular economy, it's about helping businesses, bringing in legislation to build that circular economy. So how can Scotland lead the way to build a circular economy, working with businesses, working with farmers, working with actors within the economy to switch from that linear straight line to that circular economy, which is ultimately regenerative and restorative and has a massive impact on carbon emissions? What about your view on the Cambo oil field off Shetland? Uh, the UK government says this is up to the Oil and Gas Authority now to make a decision about whether or not it should go ahead. What's your view on it? Within a circular economy, the idea is that you can keep those materials in the economy for as long as possible. So oil would turn into plastic, plastic would be recycled. That would massively reduce the need for that virgin oil. Obviously, we're not in a circular economy yet. We do have a need for oil to power much of our economy, but we have to look at how we can switch from that linear consumption of oil to that circular system. So, Dame Mellon, as a yachtswoman, you broke the world record for the fastest solo circumnavigation of the globe in 2005. So how do you go from that to promoting circular economies? Well, when you sail around the world on a boat, you have with you finite resources. So literally what you take with you when you leave is all you have until you finish. 
and you develop this overwhelming understanding of what finite really means. And I suddenly translated that definition of finite that I felt so clearly on board the boat to our global economy and realised that you know, we have finite resources available to us once in the history of humanity, and yet our economy uses them up. And in the long term, that really can't run. So I then set my, my sights on trying to understand how does the global economy run? How do we use resources? Yes, we're using them up, so how can we use those resources differently? And that led to the circular economy. And I can see that connection, but, but how different does it feel? I mean, you must have so much adrenaline when you're racing as a yachtswoman. Does this job, if you like, feel very different? In some ways, it's very different, of course. You know, I never thought I'd be speaking to you about economics, for example, when I was racing around the world. But actually, when you race around the world, you set yourself a goal, and that goal is to break the record or to get back alive or, or win the race. But actually, within this new challenge, the circular economy, this is about the future of our global economy. It's about the future of humanity. And actually, it really matters. And it's really important that we have a goal set to what that could look like. And that's what led me to the circular economy, looking at how can we use resources in our world that's a goal. This isn't about running away from a problem, but it's about running towards a solution. And since we set up the Ellen MacArthur Foundation in 2010, our goal has been to look at the economics into a circular economy, to accelerate that transition to a circular economy, to truly understand what that looks like globally. And we now have a network of thousands of organisations and governments across the world working on that path.